And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Sorry guys, we're running a little bit late. Had some tech problems, but we got the tech problems fixed. And um, so we're glad to have you with us. And we are moving right along in our teaching and on, on your words, your tongue, and your future. And um, again, we keep getting offline. So when I say offline, getting off task and moving off to different stuff. And um, so... I'm just, going to, I'm just trying to make sure we are, we are on task to where we're supposed to be tonight. Hallelujah. Um, let's go ahead and move into uh, faith, our confession of faith. And um, I think we did that. Okay, believe, you know, we talked about, um, I think we got into the love of God. I believe we did get into the love of God. Um, we have to you know, believe God is for you. We have to know that God loves us. And we have to walk in the love of God. And exercise the love of God. Um, let's talk about, here's where we are. Let's look, talk about this. The godly tongue. As a believer, if, you're, if you're, your faith, your words, your tongue, um, your words is going to control your future, you need a godly tongue. Look over, if you with me, if you will, to the 13th chapter of the, uh, or the 13th proverb. Um, we call it chapters, but technically it would be the 13th proverb. And... Um, Let's look into Proverb 13 and look down at verse 2 and 3. It says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors, transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life or preserves his life. He that guards his mouth preserves his life. That's kind of how the Hebrew reads out. Um, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. It is important. Notice here, he keeps his mouth, keeps his life, preserves his life. When you watch what you say, when you guard your mouth, when you, you know, David says something very interesting, and he, he said this, put a watch over me that I might not sin against thee with my lips. So our mouth can cause, a mouth can cause us a lot of trouble. A lot, uh, you know, um. What did James say? The tongue is a little member, you know, but boasteth great things. What, how great a fire, a little fire kindleth, you know. We put bits in horses' mouths, and we, we put, you know, we, we steer ships with a small rudder. Even so, the tongue, you know, no man can tame it. You just can't tame your tongue. That's, and that's where we got into trouble conceptual-wise with our positive confessions. We were just trying to tame the tongue by having an exercise and not saying the wrong thing. We have to train the tongue. And the way you train the tongue is to fill yourself with the Word of God. You get so full of the Word of God and so much of the Word of God in you that, it, that your, your heart, it's your soul, uh, they are beginning to govern the words of your mouth. And when they're coming up, you say, no, that's, you can't say that. Not... You know, and that's, I, I'm, I'm not, I am not opposed to confess your beeper friends. Back when I was at Raymond, we, everybody had one. It was, it was symbolic, but it was, it, it actually, people used them. You know, you make a, you say something that, was, that sounded possibly negative, and 45 people were jumping on you, casting the negative confession devil out of you, telling you I wouldn't say that to, if I were you. You can have that if you want it, but I don't want it. I mean, all, all kinds of stuff, you know. That's a negative confession. I mean, we were... We were something else in those days. And there are days I think it wouldn't hurt us to have a couple, a couple weeks of that anyway, retraining again, you know, just to remind us, hey, you know, uh, have you noticed what you're saying? You know, I laughed so hard, I thought it almost tickled me to death. You know? Are you, you know? Oh, I mean, you about scared me to death. You know, somebody walked through and spooked you. You, know, you, you just about scared me to death. You know, man, I thought, I thought I'd die. You know, um, and, and we talk death. I mean, it is the nature. We grew up doing that. Why? Because the unregenerated man is associated with the kingdom of death, kingdom of darkness. And so we, we speak negativity. We speak darkness. We speak defeat. We speak death. You know, I mean, we, we basically are Eeyores. You know, um, got a kid at school, and uh, you know, last year he was he was grumpy. 
This year he's Eeyore. I mean, he's just Eeyore. You know, Mr. Taylor, don't, you know, they walk in and I'm, hey, everybody, how y'all doing this morning? Welcome to school and we're so glad to see you this morning. Happy to have you and uh, have a great day, you know. And he's like, it's going to be a bad day, you know. <laughs> Why have you got to talk like that? I don't want to hear that first thing in the morning, you know. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, I mean, that's how, he does, that's how he rolls with it. I mean, it's just. Buddy, you need to you need to get over that, you know. You need you need to get going and um, and have a better day than that. So anyway, I'm posting on Facebook so the people know we're here and welcome. All right, okay. And so um, I said we're going to start calling him. Eeyore. I told the, uh, the the main teacher. I said we're going to start calling him Eeyore. I said he needs a little tigger in his life. Right. You know, said all this Eeyore stuff, man. I mean, you know. And he's, he's just determined to be grumpy, you know. And um, we got Christians that are like that, yeah. you know. They, they, don't, they don't believe in rejoicing. That is to rejoice. Be joyous again. Get joyous again, you know, to rejoice. Rejoy. It's kind of like replenish the earth. You can't replenish what well, wasn't originally plenished. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, having a godly tongue, speaking the right things, Proverbs 12, 18 says that the, uh, there is, he, there is speaketh 12, 18, like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. That means that if we're wise with our words, we'll speak health. If we're wise with our words, we'll speak life. You know, Pro Proverbs 4, 24, based on all this is found in Proverbs, isn't it? The book of wisdom, uh, put away from the froward mouth. And from and perverse lips, put them far away from thee. We don't want a froward mouth. We don't want perverse lips. We want godly mouth, godly lips. Uh, again, Psalm 141.3, you kind of quoted it earlier. Uh, David, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Okay? So there, there's, even in the Old Covenant, there was an understanding that what we say govern things. God taught Abraham that lesson when he changed his name. Think about it. He came to him and said at age 99, he didn't do it earlier because he wasn't ready for it. Okay? But he said, no longer shall your name be called Abraham, but you shall be called Abraham, the father of a multitude. Now, I know when he showed up at the town gate with all the young whippersnappers up there and says, guys, don't call me Abram anymore. Uh, I am now Abraham. Can you imagine the mockery that the old guy got? Uh, he done got, got seen now. Uh, that, all, that Alzheimer's or Halfheimer's or whatever else he's got has settled in on him. You know, he's, he's, he's not getting it, man. You know, I mean, if you, I mean, like, and they look like poking po 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 going, and have you seen Sarah? Man, he's got to be kidding me. Calling himself, hello, the, ma the father of a multitude. Now, we know, the Bible tells us, that he had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. It means she's no longer ovulating. There's, there, there are no eggs being produced. Uh, I, I jokingly used to say, and some people get kind of weirded out about it, but I used to call her prune womb Sarah. She's dried up. All right? There's no life in her. There's no life in her womb. But yet, God said, she'll be called Sarah instead of Sarai and became the mother of many nations. The mother of a multitude. And so they, they began, and listen, you got to think, it only took you three months. Because the same time next year, Isaac was born. So three months from the time that God changed his name to his confession was elevated. What, what happened? We, we know that Abraham during that time had wavered back and forth. He got about 13 years out and began to say, well, hey, let the Eliezer, he's a steward in my house. You know, let, you know uh, I need a seed. And he went in with Hagar, and Hagar, uh, his wife said, hey, look, take Hagar. You know, you're not going to get a baby by me. At least take, get one somehow. And um, God wasn't happy with that. We're still dealing with the trouble from that all these thousands of years later. I mean, you know, rumbles in the tent have consequences when they're not your wife. Okay? They, they have lasting consequences. We have, we have a millennial 
millennia of consequences from some rumbles in the tent. Just saying. Right? And, um, but he, his name was changed to Abraham, the father of many nations, the father of a multitude. And, you know, we are to keep the door of our lips. So, in, in other words, he couldn't keep calling himself Abram, who he, who he was. He had to be changed. His vision, had the vision of who he was had to be changed. And it was changed by what he said. That changed the vision of who he was. You know, I mean, think about it. Sarah's in the other room when the Lord appears and starts talking to Abraham about next, this time next year. And she's laughing. It's not a joyous laugh. It's a mockery laugh. It's a <laughs> kind of laugh. Yeah. I don't know who that is in there, Abraham. I am. <laughs> that, that, that was foolish talking going in over there. And the Lord says, why, why did you laugh? I didn't laugh. I mean, and then she realized she got caught. Yeah. <laughs> you got caught. Mm-hmm. God was faithful. Then they, they changed it, began to speak what God said. You know, the Bible says, you know, that um, he, he refers to those things that do not exist as though they did. Makes reference to things that do not exist. You know, calls those things just be not as though they are, King James. Weymouth says, it makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. When he started calling himself father of many nations, he was making a reference to something that did not exist. As if it did. I said, as if it did. <clears throat> So shall see these be as the sand of the seashore and the stars of the heaven. It was just that it took 24 years after that to get it to come to pass. And, you know, uh, 24 years and three months or 24 years and then three months of confessing after the 24, 23 years. You know, the 23 years got into three months of confession and boom. Here we go. Sarah's conceived. Sarah's had a baby. All because the words of his mouth changed. Okay? And, and, and remember, God um, would, you know, um, when, when God came to Abraham at 90 and 9 and began to say this time next year, you know, uh, he, he began to say, oh, the Ishmaelite lived before thee. I've heard your prayer. But it won't be through Ishmael. It'll be through your wife, Sarah. God got it all straight. You know, you got this wrong. You've been thinking like, this, 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 but I'm telling you it's going to be this way. Now, you're changing your name, and she's changing her name because this is the promise of the Lord. It's going to be supernatural because you're going to say what I say about it. Okay? So our, mouth, our, our godly mouth is important. Um, Jesus tells us in Luke 6, 45, he said, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We could almost say it this way. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth withdraweth. You're not, you're not going to pour in unbelief and then put out faith. Now, you know, Dick's, a, Dick's a, a, a retired programmer, okay? I was a short-term programmer in the secular world, okay? Um, that is a job I really enjoy. I mean, I really enjoy programming, but God called me to the ministry. So, you know, why don't you go back and do it now? Because they're so far down the road from where I was. When I was, when I was doing it, things have changed so much. I'd have to go back to school for two years just to get caught up to where they are. You, I could do it. I mean, you know, the, the, that mind still works. Dick could go back in. He, now, if he went back here right now, he's been out two years now. How long have you been retired? Seven. You've been retired seven? <laughs> Man, since like just yesterday you quit. All right, he spent seven years. But you know, he, he may have a little refreshers, but it's, you know, just to kind of make sure that we're on the same page with some of the, the changes and stuff that we don't know if, if may have taken place. But, you know, um, but we had, you know, back in the day, you know, you had your, you had your computer. You got your CPU, okay? You know, and you had you had little input stations, okay, boards. And then over here you had a you had some kind of printer, you know. 
you know. All right, a little printer over here. And um, so you would, you know, you would input and you would output, okay? And you, we, we have a, a bank of these little terminals where they, we call key punch operators. Remember that term? Key punch operators. All right. We had to, oh, Ellie was one, okay, which all were inputting data, okay. Now, if you were really old, they were inputting data actually onto a card, okay, and then the card went into the CPU, all right. Now, these guys come over here, put it here, it would get in the central processing unit, that's what the computer, we would call it a CPU, central processing unit, the computer. Uh, back in the day, IBM 360, 370. Bring back memories, Dick. <laughs> and IBM 360, 370, or 370, that was the second, just a modified 360. Okay, and then you print all this stuff out on this big bar, I mean, 32 inch, I mean, 132 column paper on chain printers. <laughs> and, and then stuff, and stuff be wrong over here. You can have wrong information over here. And then people go, that stupid computer didn't work. That thing needs to be fixed. And he call IBM, get down here and do some work on that thing. It ain't working right. Because what we always found out almost invariably was this is where the problem was. Right here. Why? We even came up with an acronym. IGO to describe what was taking place over here and giving us answers over here. Garbage in, garbage out. If you put the wrong stuff in, it doesn't matter. This this is the, this is designed. This CPU is designed to take whatever you put in. Back in the day, like I said, it was a card. Whatever you put in there, it is designed to take it and to do with whatever's on that card what it was told to do. And it's going to give you a report, and you get, it's going to roll out paper into a box. We had a box sitting under it with paper feeding in and a box sitting out front it would roll into. Kind of how you did it, Dick? Yep. yep. You know, and then you tear it off, take, take the whole stack out and go somewhere with it. We would blame this for the wrong output over here. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the wrong stuff got put in over here. And because the wrong stuff went in, this simply did with it what it knew to do or what it was, it was designed to do and gave the results based on not it messing up, but based on what was put in. So it didn't matter how great of a program you wrote. It didn't matter how slick it was, how cool it was, all the things it could do. Print the fanciest reports. If your data came out wrong, it was no good to you. It would mess you up. If you were using it to track sales, if you were using it to track... Um, you know, where you need to you know, move in your company, what you need to do in your company based on you know, projections and stuff of this data. This data could bankrupt your company if it was wrong. Okay? Well, think of it this way. Think of this as your words. This is not an IBM 360. It's your heart. And this is your outcome. If your words are wrong, your heart is designed to grow the words. It doesn't matter if you put unbelief in there. It is designed to grow it. Are you here? It doesn't matter if the computer program it doesn't matter if the information is wrong coming into the computer program. If you told it to tabulate this and add this and multiply it by this and, you know, and, and to do whatever formulas on it and get this output, it's going to do that with wrong data. 
Because this is what it is designed to do. You wrote programs designed to take that information that comes in and do certain things with it and print out the, the results. Your words are the input to your heart. Your heart is designed to process that and plant it and grow it and give you the outcome, to give you the results of what is growing. It is not, your heart is not a filter. Your heart doesn't filter this. Hello? I said, your heart doesn't filter this. What does? Well, in some cases, it became so extreme, we, we came up with what we refer to as redundancy. You'd have people key stuff in, and then another group key the same information in behind it. If there was a discrepancy, they had to find out what it was. So they began redundancy. And that is, put a watch over my mouth. Dick, I hope you love this. This is, this is, that's, <laughs> Need my computer people to really get this. Okay, my verifying. Yeah, that that's true. Verifying, you know, redundancy. So verify. <coughs> but it was a redundant action. You're doing the same thing more than once. But because so many errors were taking place here, and we we're getting such bad output over here, then there had to be something in place to stop us getting all the way over here before we found it. So by doing the verification, by doing the watch over my mouth, we were stopping, we stopped the words before they get planted in our heart and had to pull them up. Am I on the screen way over here? Am I on there way over here? Okay, great. All right. So, so when we put a watch over our mouth, when, we, when, we have, when we're saying, Lord, put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against you, you know, um, you know, keep, you know, keep, I'm keeping my words. We're, we're simply saying, I need to verify that what I say is going to be the right thing in my heart so I can get the outcome I really desire. Because 99% of people, they're just, you know, they're, they're so religiously brainwashed they can't even think straight. Okay? Well, whatever the Lord wants, I'll take it. You know, that kind of stuff. But most people, if you set them down and say, um, do you want to die early? No. So they don't want that outcome. They don't want the outcome of not making it. You want to be broke and poor and defeated. They don't want that outcome. Now, they might not think there's any way not to have that outcome, but they don't want that outcome. Okay? So uh, a business does not want bad input and get bad data. They don't want that output. As a Christian, we want the outcome that God's word promises us we want the outcome of the promises okay that's what we want well, we're if, if our heart is the CPU of our life and it's simply going to do with what you put in there what it's designed to do that is to grow it you're not going to get this You're gonna get you get a you'll get a bad data, you'll get a bad outcome, you'll get a bad output. So by watching what we say, having guards in our mouth. So what do we got? We gotta get the garbage. We can't put the garbage in. Because you're gonna get the garbage out. There, there's just the way it is. The computer program is not going to figure out you put in bad data. It's going to do with it what you told it to do with it. And your heart's going to do with it what God, go, go with God. Your heart is going to do with the words of your mouth what God designed it to do. That is grow it. God's tillage, we're God's husbandry. We are the farm. Our words of our mouth, you know, um, we're, we're, we're the pen, tongue of a, uh, our, our tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. It writes on the tables of your heart. And then your heart processes that by growing it. And then it will produce the outcome of the promises. This is why we have to be careful with our words. And I did not sit down at home and dream this up and think, this is going to be a great, great analogy. I got the one I was standing here and just started coming. You know, this is great. I love, I love that. It's a great analogy. 
I mean, Penny, did you get it? You're not a computer programmer. Did you get it? Okay. All right. But you got it. I got it. All right. So we're not, we're not IBM 360s. We're Holy Ghost born again. All right. We're the H, we're the H, we're the BAHG model. Born again and baptized the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. So if our words are right. But that's why he says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. Jesus said a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But if you put the wrong thing in, you're going to get the wrong thing out. Garbage in, garbage out. But if you'll put the right things in, your heart will, 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 will take that and produce this outcome you're looking for. It'll grow it. It'll produce it. We'll get it. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Um, Matthew 12, 36, Jesus said, I say unto you that every idle word men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now let me tell you, if you're the key punch operator and your data is always wrong, you're going to face a day of judgment. Okay? It's called, back of that day, a pink slip. Usually, it walks down to your desk, stands beside you, says, please step away from the terminal, you're coming with us. And they march you out of the building, and then they, they collect your possessions and bring them to you and say, you're no longer employed here. So you can't tear anything up on the way out being mad because you got fired. Okay? Right. So, you know, there's a day of judgment coming. You keep putting the wrong stuff in, a day of judgment's coming. Okay? Um, Paul writes in Romans 8, he says, What saith that the words are nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is the word of faith which we preach. We've got to put the word in. James says, 126, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but, he, he, uh, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. We go right back over here. If he bridles not his tongue, if the words are not right, then it, the outcome's going to be in vain. Because this part is just going to do what it's going to do when you stick it in there. Okay? It's, it's going to do what it is designed to Your heart does what it's designed to do. And that is to grow the words of your mouth. It's designed that way. Okay? Some of us need a Holy Ghost core dump. Now, I just, I just blew you all away. Well, when IBM would come in and there was a problem with the computer, or, you know, or, or if you wrote your program and it just gave you all this bad data, you know, and sometimes it would just, it would, it would just it, your, your, your stuff was so bad, it would lock the machine up. And they would, they would come in and they would do some stuff on the, on the panel or whatever, and, it, and then the printer would just start dumping out all this uh, hex. You get pages. G, 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 G. H F G one three seven eight nine eight you know all this stuff and you had to read it in increments of four, four four uh, or eight. Two characters. Okay, it word was eight bytes. So you had to actually go along and take your take your little um, a little measure and go across the thing and you could read what we called the core dump. What was actually happening internally in the machine at the time it, it bombed. And you could actually go through that thing. I saw guys just they go, and I didn't ever get that good. I was like, they're just going, like reading another language because they'd seen it so much. They could, their brain could see it. And you could find out what was going on on the inside. And this is what we do when we put a watch over our hearts and we begin to seek God and we begin to listen to the word of God. We bring in outside help. The teacher comes in and does a core dump in our heart and says, this is what's going on in your heart at the time of the failure. And this has to be fixed in order for it to work right. Yeah, if you can find out.
Okay? And so, and pages and pages of hex. Hexadecimal. Now that's, that is that um, is 0 through 9, A through H? Or, or G? Uh-huh. F, A through F. How many of you ever looked on your computer screen had the blue screen of death and saw, you know, F, you know, A, B, 1, 4, 5, five and all this kind of stuff? That's hexadecimal. It's in hex. Okay? You had, it was 16 characters that you could use. Try multiplying and adding and dividing and that stuff. <laughs> we had computer math. I'm sure you had computer math, and you had to learn how to do all that. Yeah, you had to do it by hand. Yeah, you had to do it by hand. That's right. You had to, you had to actually kind of translate. What the, what the F was and what the A was and all that stuff, and then add and multiply and each digit and all, each, each section and all that stuff. All right, so we, we get cord The Holy Ghost, when we sit in church and the Word's being taught, we're getting a core dump, and it's, and it's being read by the anointing to find in our life what's going on that's keeping us from getting this instead of this. So we can go back over here and correct it and start doing the right thing. Okay? And all of us need a core dump. We, we call it check up from the neck up. Okay? And, and, and in, Christian, in Christianese, we call it we need a check up from the neck up. We need to know God will, by the Holy Ghost, come and begin to work in you and begin to show you what's going on in you inter internally that is out of line with what you're putting in, what you've been putting in there that you think is cool and it's way off base. So that you can go back over here and straighten that up so it can process properly and give you the right outcome. Amen? Glory to God. Um, that's why he said if you think you, you, if you don't bridle your tongue, your, your religion is in vain. You're going to think, uh, yeah, I love the Lord. I'm, I love him. Praise God. I love Jesus. Everything's going to be all right. Well, why is it going to be all right? Remember that song? I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Well, and and we, we, uh, we picked up, started singing that song, and I said, guys, guys, I said, so much of that song is good. But you've got to change word feeling to assurance. We can't go by our feelings. And I know sometimes they thought I was crazy. I didn't care because it's not my feeling that everything's going to be all right because my feelings can get up and be squirrely tomorrow. They can flake out. Okay. You, I mean, you can wake up tomorrow morning and not feel, uh, feel married. You better not tell your spouse, I don't feel married. I'm going to find somebody else today. Because if you're going to say that, go ahead and give me a call first. So I can start preparing your eulogy. Because you're going to be dead. And I mean, your eulogy will probably be something like, here lies a fool. <laughs> it's not I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I've got assurance. And the assurance is God said. See. <clears throat> all right. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul writes and says, We have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. See, we speak what we believe. We speak because it's been verified. We begin to say we want a promise, we want an outcome of a promise, so we put a watch over our mouth and verify that our words are lining up with wanting this, to produce this. You got a recipe? You got anybody, got anybody got recipes at home that you use? Now, I'm, I'm going to tell a funny. Back when I was a kid, I, I guess my, my parents were divorced by now. And my, da my dad had not remarried. And so, and we were living on, um, we lived on Maple Street. And we were down in, the, and it was a two-story duplex. So that house, that's gone. I don't know if it burned down or what. It's, it's, a, it's a regular house there now, but, it, but the, the uh, two-story duplex is gone. And the guy that lived here in Greensboro, who moved, ended up moving here in Greensboro, named J.C. English, lived next door to us. My dad was working gas station, um, uh, at night and climbing poles for Greenville Utilities during the day. He's working two jobs. And so J.C. and his wife Priscilla would watch us. Okay? 
they would they would kind of keep an eye on us because we were, we were in the same building house, just two separate entrances and stuff. But they could kind of keep an eye on me and my brother. And um, and so one day I was going. Y'all remember the old little popsicle trays? You take Kool Aid, and you could take it and you know and put the stuff in there, and put the things in, and stick it in the freezer and freeze it and you know have Kool have Kool Aid popsicles. Y'all remember those? I guess they still make those. Yeah, and uh, so I made some. Got stuff out of the cabinet, made it, put it in there, put it in the freezer. Had some of my friends were out playing, called him over and, and gave them. His mom, his mom happened to be with him, so she, they came over and I gave it to him. He's eating it, and she says, "Now, honey, tell him it was good." He said, "I can't, Mama. It was terrible." <laughs> Did you know that sugar, and salt are both white? <laughs> They're both white. It will both up both of them. Both of the mixture froze in the color of the Kool Aid pack. To to the to the eye, you didn't know that you had one or the other. <laughs> I can't, Mama. It was terrible. <coughs> I was, a five, I was like a five-year-old kid. It looked like sugar. You know? Put the white stuff in there. That's what you do. We think, see, we can take what look, may look like it's the right thing and put in. And you get a horrible outcome. We can take what some preacher said to do and not verify it with the Word of God and not measure it against the Word of God and put it into the ground of our heart and produce tares and not wheat because we didn't have the right formula in that mixture. We had the wrong thing in there. We had an opinion. We had somebody's personal revelation we had somebody's idea and we didn't have the word of God but our heart will grow it anyway I said our heart will grow it anyway that's why we have to be more noble than those in Thessalonica and search the scriptures we have to verify we have to Because if we don't verify, we're gonna get the we're gonna get X's and not the promises. I've told this before, but I'll tell it again because it really fits in here. My um, when I was in community college at Pitt Community in Greenville, I worked my um, I did an on-job training job. Um, or a uh, this was an on-job training because that was the next year when I went to work. Actually, I did my own job training. I had to take 20 hours on the job training to get a two-year community college degree in computer program. I did that at work on the job I got. Okay, that summer before I had an internship at Burroughs Welcome, and they had they had one lab down in Greenville. All the other labs were at Research Triangle Park. But they had a lab down in Greenville called uh, Pharmaceutical Research and Development Lab, and they they had, you know, from the time they had moved down there, they had you know bottles of Impum compound with codeine number three in a in an incubator and in a freezer. And they had all the all the different drugs they produced were in incubators and, and at room temperature and in freezers. And they were doing data on them. Well, their, their computer system they had been using got corrupted and was, and was antiquated and it wasn't replaceable. They needed to upgrade. So what did we have to do? We had to take all the years of data. We're talking cases of, of rainbow bar paper. In 32 columns, you've seen rainbow bar. Instead of just green and white, it was you know, yellow, green, blue, pink, you know, it, so you could just see it easier, read it easier. We had to take cases of that and re-enter all the data in the new computer system. Then we had to print it out and then take the printouts and measure them against the, old, the original printouts and verify. So we had two people who would sit there all day long taking this paper and reading the new one printed out and another person reading the old one to verify that all that, why? Because any of that messed up, messed them up with the FDA. 
all of their all of their everything they had done all of that stuff had i mean it was it was governed by the fda i mean this is drugs these are these are prescription drugs these are control uh imprim compound with codeine number three this is a controlled drug all of this stuff has to be verified it's shelf life in, in this temperature it's shelf life at room temperature it's shelf life in the freezer all this data, all this data, all the drugs. Neosporin, y'all have ever heard of Neosporin? Burroughs Welkin was, was the inventor of Neosporin, you know, not Glaxo, whoever has it now, because Burroughs Welkin got bought out. Um, but, you know, Neosporin, uh, Sudafed, Actifed. Uh, yeah. Now, Vic Vaporub was done by the Vicks Company. It was actually invented right here in Greensboro. Yep. A pharmacist in Greensboro invented it. Yep. There's a, there's a, there's a thing downtown, a historical marker downtown about it on Elm Street. Um, on Elm Street, starting heading out south out of downtown, there's a historical marker about Vicks Vapor Rub. Yep. Um, so all this data had to be verified. Why? Because if it wasn't right going into the new system, it would mess up everything they had done on that particular drug from the time, and this was 1979. They had been there since 69, 70. Nine years of data could be skewed. And they would take these things out, you know, they would go in there every, every three months or whatever and pull it out, and they would just figure out how much degradation had taken place, and, you know, and all this stuff, how long, the con what the container was doing, all this stuff was being done. All that data had to be verified. It had to be accurate. It had to be accurate, or it would mess up their outcome. If we we're that meticulous about drugs, how, about more of, how much more about the issues of life? Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That's why we're to guard it. We can't afford the bad stuff going in because it's going to produce whatever you put in there. It's going to produce it. And you're not going to get this, you're going to get that. Amen? We're going to stop right here. Praise the Lord. Hope you guys enjoy this. And if you're not a computer programmer, you probably got some lessons on computer programming that you didn't know you were ever going to get. And, um, you know, well, I don't do any of that stuff. We don't do any of that stuff anymore. I know you're, you're a high-level programmer. That doesn't mean you're smarter. It means you're using the stuff that does it all for you. Isn't that right, Dick? Come on, Dick. That's right. Yeah, we we, we want to see people who can write an assembler in hex and uh, machine language and have CRT screens burn in on their eyeballs, you know? Been locked up in the room so long that the computer screens have burned in on their eyelids, you know? <laughs> The real programmers, <laughs> flowcharts, print rules. Some people are probably going, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. We sure love you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Until we meet again, remember this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Good night. Yeah.